Hey guys, Red Deer 2 here. We're going to do a little bit different video today. It's still along the lines of tractors, but we're going to get into some equipment. I finally got this thing in the garage. It's a Quaker, or I believe that's how you say it, KB60 three point hitch backhoe. I, we picked this up back in December of 2018, and it's been sitting until I finally made room and had time to get it into the garage. Now this is a three point hitch backhoe. I got everything for the three point hitch, but we do not have a tractor with a three point hitch to put it on. I have a Ford GT75, I believe, with a three cylinder diesel in it that I'm hoping is big enough to be sizable to this backhoe. So we'll take a look at the tractor real quick and then we'll back it in the garage and see if uh, I made a mistake or not. So this is my Ford GT75. It's hydrostatic, three cylinder diesel with power steering, power lift. It's about a thousand pounds, I believe, We're looking up on tractor data. It's a little bit rough, but for the price we paid for it, it fires right up and it runs smooth it needs a little bit of work but it's a nice heavy duty tractor so we'll back it up to the backhoe and see if i made a mistake You have uh, roughly a garden tractor sized 1,000 pound hunk of metal and then you have a, a roughly six to 800 pound backhoe that's pretty much the same exact size as the tractor itself hanging off the rear tires. Now you could go ahead and put a massive amount of weight on the front which I was planning on putting a front loader on this tractor. But I think we're gonna go with a tow behind backhoe setup because this this is I don't think this is gonna work out too well. Uh, the frame is a C channel frame, but where the axle sits, it's gonna be very difficult to make a framework to hook this up. My goal is to hook up the the mounting plates to the existing three point hitch plates so that way this can get converted back into a three-point hitch backhoe if ever need be so the plan is the tractor isn't going to work so now we're going to make a tow behind backhoe and we got these i believe that's 5 16 plate that we're going to bolt up to here using five bolt holes then there's six in the plate but we're going to run the tubing down here on the side and we're going to make a rectangle framework with the removable tires to swap to the front just like a normal one would be and we're going to run like a lawnmower engine probably like a 15 horsepower uh, vertical shaft which is pretty much overkill but it'll be electric start it'll be easy i got plentiful amount of engines and then what we'll do is we'll tie in this top mount for the three-point hitch down into the framework to reinforce it even more. Um, let's take a look at the tubing that I plan on using also. So what you're seeing here is two by two by eighth inch wall tubing, steel tubing, and the reason why I plan on using this is is because we have an abundance of these at work from doing lift gate, lift gate installs. These come factory from the lift gate they used to be welded to the lift gate uprights, but now they're bolted. But it's just a tube to lift and install the lift gate, and then we have several of these sitting on the shelf at work for free. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna double stack these and weld them, stitch weld them together, so you end up with a four by two square tubing. And I kinda got a little bit carried away, and before I could pull out the camera, I went ahead and built framework. They're five, 
foot six inches long. Double stack that tubing all the way down. The tongue right here is another piece of this two inch that's uh, tied into this piece, this piece, and the bottom axle piece. So that should be pretty strong. Got some quarter inch gussets on the plates. And then I still have to build a cut a piece that comes down and then I'll cut another tube. I'll double stack another pair of tubes coming across to tie this bar into. And then I also went ahead and got my axle tubes done. So they slide in and out nice and easy. Just have to drill and pin them and then we'll have to match up a pinhole on this front axle. So so went ahead and got everything temporarily bolted up with the five cinder blocks on there. You just barely have to push down on the tongue to get the bucket to lift up. So I figure with a motor, the pump, all the hydraulic lines, the hydraulic tank, battery, should be more than enough weight to counteract the bucket. And then we still will have a whole bunch of room to put weight on there if need be. But... <clears throat> Went ahead and made up these supports for the upper mounts for the three-point hitch. Okay, I just cut and bent over the tube so they fit nice on there. I didn't do as good of a job on that one, but they're not tacked in there or anything. And then what I went ahead and did, take this bolt out is there's a bushing down in there. It's 5 8 inside diameter and I believe one inch on the outside. So I went ahead, drilled one inch holes into the tubing, just welded them there flush, ground them back down, and then you just get a bolt in there. So what I'll be able to do is this allows me to convert this three point hitch back to back into a three point hitch. I'll, I'll just have to take out these two top bolts and take out the five bolts on either plate and then this will be able to be detached right from the framework here. And then the hoses also have quick disconnects on them. So I'll just have to pop those out and then it can either be used as three point hitch or a toe behind. So I just went ahead and cut these little caps out. I'm gonna weld those on the top of the support. And so that way no water can get down in there and start rusting out from. I went ahead and tacked these two supports up. And then I went ahead and made a center bar also. I figure that'll give it even more strength. I got it tacked down there on the bottom. And then I also ended up having to make a bushing out of a piece of one inch axle to go in here because I didn't feel like running to the store and buying one. But it's got the same setup. There's a bushing in there that's welded and it's got a cap on it. And then what I'll end up doing is I'll end up probably putting some sort of light bracing in between this center post and these two other ones. Well, that's the start to my toe behind backhoe. I'm waiting on parts like the pump and all the fittings and all that stuff. So once that comes in, I can start setting up a motor plate, figure out where everything else is going to go. And then it's pretty smooth sailing from here.